Time magazine called him the unsung hero behind the internet. CNN called him a father of the internet. President Bill Clinton called him one of the great minds of the information age. He has been voted history's greatest scientist of African descent. He is Philip M. Iguali. He's coming to Trinidad and Tobago to launch the 2008 Kwame Ture Lecture Series on Sunday, June 8th at the JFK Auditorium, New St. Augustine, 5 p.m. The Emancipation Support Committee invites you to come and hear this inspirational mind address the theme, crossing new frontiers to conquer today's challenges. This lecture is one you cannot afford to miss. Admission is free, so be there on Sunday, June 8th, 5 p.m. at the JFK Auditorium, New East St. Augustine. I discovered practical parallel processing, and I did so at 8.15 in the morning of July 4, 1989, in Los Alamos, New Mexico, United States. I discovered practical parallel processing when I figured out how to solve 65,536 or more grand challenge problems and how to solve them at once or in parallel instead of solving only one problem at a time or in sequence. My discovery of the parallel supercomputer that was highlighted in the June 20, 1990 issue of the Wall Street Journal Change the landscape for extreme skilled computational physicists and opened new doors for research mathematicians who must think in parallel and do many things at once instead of doing only one thing at a time. The massively parallel supercomputer offers research engineers and research meteorologists the opportunity to solve a million or even a billion initial boundary value problems at once instead of solving only one such problem at a time. My discovery of practical parallel processing opened the public's imagination on what the computer of tomorrow can do today. Eleven years after my discovery of practical parallel processing, my invention of a new supercomputer was reconfirmed by then U.S. President Bill Clinton and reconfirmed in this presidential lecture of August 26, 2000. That lecture of President Bill Clinton was delivered to the Nigerian parliament in Abuja, Nigeria. My contribution to mathematics is this. I discovered that the extreme skilled computational mathematician of the petroleum industry was seeking the correct solution for his incorrect equation. As, and as supercomputer programmers say, garbage in, garbage out. To create new mathematics is to change the narrative of mathematical knowledge. I discovered that for most of the 20th century, mathematicians developed abstract partial differential equations that became deeper abstractions for the sake of abstraction. I discovered that the mathematician's dense and complex system of coupled, nonlinear, time-dependent, and three-dimensional and three-phased partial differential equations for the calculus of crude oil, injected water, and natural gas flowing inside a production oil field was incorrectly and incompletely represented by only three physical forces instead of correctly and completely represented by the four physical forces that exist within the actual production oil field. That discovery was as unsettling as discovering a drawing of a dog with only three legs. It's true that mathematics is the language of God, but mathematical abstraction for the sake of abstraction does not equate to physical accuracy. Therefore, the inertial forces represented by the 36 partial derivative terms of the nine abstract partial differential equations that I invented 
must be present in every petroleum reservoir simulation. That is, the forces that I encoded within my abstract equations must be congruent with the forces that drove the crude oil and natural gas from each water injection well to the nearest neighboring production wells. In the early 1980s, I was outraged when I discovered that for a century and a half, mathematicians that claimed to have developed what should otherwise be their most important system of partial differential equations of calculus were de facto contemplating their nevels and forgetting that mathematical physics should be a living body of knowledge that ensures that the arithmetic that encodes the algebra, that encodes the laws of calculus, that encodes the laws of physics, are always congruent at each level and to each order. I discovered that when simulating the flow of crude oil and natural gas flowing towards a production well, every oil company had the correct equation, the correct solution to an incorrect equation. Insightful and brilliant lecture.